I want to welcome all of you in the Bible School at the West Midlands Open College and those also doing degrees at the Mukamona Johnny University. Uh, all of you here are very special and important and today's lesson is on the module which talks about the cultural nuances, understanding the cultural nuances, understanding the cultural differences, understanding the cultural barriers, and in the process, breaking the cultural barriers with a view to reach a group of people for the gospel of Jesus Christ, all the good news. And I pray that God will richly bless you as you embark on this module and other modules inform you on other aspects but this module is going to focus on cultural nuances cultural differences cultural barriers father i pray in the name of jesus christ as your dear students sit under the voice of your servant to learn that which you have commissioned them to learn with a view to be empowered and move in other territories and speak preach teach the word of God, as you commissioned us. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Let's very quickly go into uh, the teaching. The main objectives, as you finish this module, you should be able to demonstrate your ability to reach out to different communities with different cultures. And secondly, you should be able to have techniques of how to break the cultural barriers. And thirdly and most important, you should be able to shape the gospel such that it fits in the hearts of people. These are the three major outcomes I expect. And above all, you should be able to uh, provide good answers to your assessment. Some of you are on the practical uh, assessment, some of you are doing theoretical written work, and so forth, including professional discussions. In all these things, as you come on, uh, as you go through this topic, bear in mind to have an in-depth understanding. This lesson gives a grounding, but the other materials that you have to read. Let's very quickly go to the book of the First Corinthians, chapter nine and verse 20, 20 to twenty-two. This is a very important aspect. This, the writer to the Corinthians, which I believe most of you know is the Apostle Paul, who was called to be an apostle to the Gentiles. Paul was a very uniquely called individual, and he has written much of the New Testament, so we can learn something from there, and we believe the Bible is inspired by God. Praise God. First Corinthians chapter 9 verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 20. I'll read. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law Though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. And verse 21, to those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I'm not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. Verse 22, to the weak I became weak, to the to win the weak. I have become all things to all men, so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I might share in its blessing. We see here the Apostle Paul sets an example of how he did his ministry. Of how he reached out to different groups of people. 
the key point we see here is the reason for what he did. But he did. He said so as to win. To win them to where? To Christ. To win them to God. Wouldn't God himself win them or reach out to them? The answer is very clear in Matthew chapter 28 and other gospels where it is written and I will quote straight from the scripture. I'm using the New International Version. You can use any other credible version. The reason why God would not come in him, by himself again like he came in the body of Christ is because of this. Matthew chapter 28 and I start reading from verse 17. When they saw him, they worshipped him. This is after the resurrection. That is Jesus Christ or Yeshua. But some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. You see, this time the Lord had faced his mission. He died for us. He rose from the dead. Now he has ascended, about to ascend now to heaven. Which means his mission is over here physically. But then he says now, you, to the disciples who were sitting at that time, and listen to this, then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Make disciples of all nations. It's plural. He began with the Jews. The Bible says he came to that which was his own. Some rejected him, but to those who believed him, who received him, gave he the power to become children of God. These ones received him. The disciples was with, so they were children of God. He spoke to them now, go and make disciples of all nations. And Jesus also now here qualifies in John 17. John 17, when he prayed for the disciples, I pray for this one. And those who will hear about me through their message. So the chain reaction of being sent continues. So today you and I who have come to God are sent to go and make disciples of all nations. Now, when the word nations is used, it's plural. It means that you find people of these different cultures, different backgrounds. They think differently. They eat differently. They dress differently. They greet differently. They speak differently. They have got different, different cultural values. Now, this is where this module comes in. And this lesson, which is lesson one on cultural nuances, lays the foundation to understand that there will be different nations. The Bible says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, not excluding one. Nations of Africa, Nations in the United Kingdom, which are four, India, Russia, China, America, Australia, name it, and Comoro Islands, places you've never heard of. Nations, all nations, this gospel must be reached, must be preached, and we must make disciples. Making is a process. Making is not just a, like through the magic wand. No, making is a process. For those who are in building constructions, you know where it starts from. You're going to have to find the right sand. You're going to have to find cement. You're going to have to find all sorts of things. Once you find them, as you plan, as you plant, you're going to have to go and now get the plant and dig the foundation. You are making 
you are creating, you are building. So it's not a one of thing. So as you come on this Bible school, as you proceed on this Bible school, you discover that you are going to be grounded and the grace of God will fall upon you to be able to have the patience and make disciples of all nations. Now, let's go back to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Number one, how do we understand these nations? How do we categorize culture? How do we categorize people? Why is it that we have so many nations? Go back to the book of Genesis, which is called the Table of Nations. After the flood, we began having different uh, uh, people coming through, and that's not a topic. Now, each of these people that came through after Noah, there was Ham, there's Cush, um, and the three sons of Noah. So the nations began coming out of that. Each of these developed the cultures. But to the present day, let's bring it home. You probably will be coming to the United Kingdom. I want to talk about the United Kingdom and what is a culture. What is culture? It's the way people live, the way people do things. That's a culture. For example, when I came to the United Kingdom for the first time, I came to learn that they believe that when you're talking to somebody, regardless of age, you've got to look them straight into their eyes. And that shows that you're honest. But the culture I came from, I was told that you cannot look your parents straight in their eyes or an elderly person straight in their eyes. That's rude. Well, the culture in the UK was that if you look in my eyes, you can see honestness, you can see integrity. That's body language, that you're connected. So that's a clash of cultures. So when you come to the UK, if you're coming from Africa, coming from India, coming from another culture, where maybe you have to kneel down for that elder like this, thank you very, very much. In the UK, they don't do that. They believe when you stand, stand still like this one, it's a sign of respect. Well, as when we, in Africa, standing before somebody like that, member of authority, it's not a sign of respect. You've got to lower your posture. Those are some casual nuances. Somebody also told me in China that uh, if you have a card, you hold it like this, you give it to them like this, when they grab and they look at it, then they put it in the pocket. When I was in the UK, I said, oh, thank you for so much. I grab a, a business card. Oh, I'll, I'll stay in touch. I'll put it straight in my pocket. Maybe that's outside that's considered to be rude. Here, yeah, there's nothing so much. So it's small little things. So culture has to do with the way people live and do certain things. So that's the culture of this nation. Another culture, uh, cultural area that we have to look at. In the UK, I'm preparing people to come and minister in the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom needs Jesus. But I want you to be prepared as you travel here or as you are on this program here locally in the UK, but you've never learned about these things. Where do people socialize? Where do people like spending time? You find that the culture here, I'm focusing on the people who are not believers yet, and also those who are believers, so that you're not shocked. You know, Paul says, though I'm free, 1 Corinthians 9, verse 19, though I'm free and belong to no man, I make myself I make myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. He doesn't belong to any, any man, but he makes himself a slave to everyone. So he can make he can win many people as possible in his given grace to Christ. In other words, he forgoes that which he knows is a culture of where he's coming from. As long as it's not sinful, because some things that we think uh, that holds us back from ministering are not even sinful. It's a cultural difference. It's a cultural perspective. So you forgo that and you go and listen to this one, accommodate them in their own territory so you may reach out to them. So Paul says, though I'm free and belong to no man, I make myself a slave to everyone. A slave is somebody who comes under a certain yoke, 
which is not favorable. So here is using like a simile. A, 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 a simile. You place yourself under a yoke. Let me give you this, this example. The United Kingdom, many a people I know, the indigenous people, like going to the pub. Two categories. One of these categories, they go to eat and drink. The other category, they just go to drink. Because they are in the pubs, they sell food as well. So for them, it's a place to go and socialize. Including some believers, they go there. Some believers don't drink, some believers drink. That's where people gather. Now, should the Lord call you and go and start reaching out to the people in pubs, you are coming from a different culture. The first thing you have to break there would be the mindset where I come from, preachers don't enter bars. You call them bars because there, in many nations, in bars they don't sell food, it's only drink. In the UK, pubs have got food here, drinks here, and amenities for children to play. So you see a different perspective here. So should God bring you into the United Kingdom and cause you to reach out to the people and you struggle to find the people to talk to? Maybe it would be good to go to a bar, a pub. When you go to a pub, make sure you're strong enough that you don't fall the other way. But there you begin to connect with the community who are in need of Jesus. Though themselves, they don't think they need Jesus because they have not heard of him properly. Neither have they heard the true gospel of salvation. In the UK, you find that people mainly go to church once every year at Christmas to hear the Christmas carols. And that's it. The whole 365 days, one day. This is how bad things are in the Western world. Now, if you're coming to the UK to be a minister, be ready for this. So, that's one of the cultural barriers you've got to break. Understand why do people go to the pub? This culture, they, they just go there for social socialization. Why can't they go to Isaka? Like in Africa, there's a place in those days, I don't know if it still happens, I think some Isakas are elsewhere. There are no no-go areas, but Isaka is a place for the elders, so they're going to sit there. If you're going to reach to the elders, you're going to find them at Isaka, a place where they sit one and talk. But if you come to the United Kingdom, the majority of the people who need to hear the word of the Lord, they go to the pub. And pubs can be packed, I can tell you that. Jam packed. Evenings up to 11 p.m. they close. Weekends. So the evangelical trail must include a walk to the pub. Pray through that God gives you grace because there you see many other things that may not be palatable to your eyes. But if the, pub, the, the Bible, according to what Apostle Paul was saying here, becomes uh, in, implementable, it says to the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. Became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I'm I myself am not under the law. So we can apply these scriptures to the cultural things. Not sinful things. Get me right here. You can't become a drunkard for the sake of a drunkard to be one to the Lord. No. That is sinning now. These are things which are, um, what can I say? The, 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 the way People do things. The way people live. Now I'm dealing with the access point. Which, where is the cultural access point in the United Kingdom? Perhaps. Because you're going to find anybody there. On the streets. Not so much an easy thing to do in the United Kingdom. This module is focusing breaking the barriers to come and reach people in the United Kingdom. 
the indigenous people in the United Kingdom. You might apply this module to other areas wherever God will call you to minister. The key point is study their culture so that you may be able to break those barriers. So I'm focusing on the pub culture here now. So the pub culture is quite strong in the United Kingdom. How do you break that barrier? How do you get somebody to, to, to how do you get somebody to actually now listen to you? Are you gonna preach the gospel in the pub itself? Or are you gonna use the pub as a catchment area to forge friendships, to forge linkages, so that as you develop that kind of trust with the people you're meeting there, then you begin to show them the scriptures. First of all, it's your character. Should you enter into a pub and say, hi, and you just, just, just hang around there, observe people on the first night, the second, third, fourth, you begin to see who comes there regularly. It, does, it doesn't harm you now. After you've seen the faces, you can walk to somebody. Oh, I saw you the other week. I thought I should say hello. Hi, oh, my name is uh, John. My name is Peter. My name is Chanda. My name is, my name is Mutale. Whatever the case might be, you introduce yourself. You so it break with barriers. So I think you guys, I just wanted to say hello. And you go away. Next time they'll see your face again. So that's Shanda. Hi, hi, buddy. Yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah. just came to 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 chill out and see. Um, it's just meet people. Then the conversation will say, "Wow, well, why what you do? Ah, you open up. You open up now. You open up. You begin to chat. So, how ah, fantastic! You know, actually, this blah blah blah. You tell them what you do with your character of Christ, so that you are breaking the breast slowly through interaction." Small introduction, don't go too much. Say, Oh, maybe we can meet up at some point in, in town on over coffee. Yeah, yeah, why not? Sure, what's my number? You're now connecting the people. It is through that process that you open up. You never know who you meet there because the first person you meet, they'll tell you, Oh, actually, I'm a general manager at this place, and I've got some. Oh, this is good. I think, I think Cynthia might like to hear about this. What you do, you know. There you go, you open up, you get links. So, when you come out in the United Kingdom, I tell people, and I tell you too, of course, it's good to find your own people so that culturally you can link up and say, hi, hi. Oh, you're from Ghana, you're from Zambia, you're from Nigeria, you're from Malawi, etc. It's good, but as a missionary, you did not come for those Christians who are now in the UK and they were born again over in Africa or over in Australia or over where you came from. You are a missionary. You've come here to look for souls that are lost. This is why you're on the program. That's why you're on the course. You understand that? So here, you become like them. In other words, if you never used to go to the pub, so you start going to the pub, not with a purpose of drinking, or getting drunk with a purpose to go and win some to the Lord because these people will never walk into church. The gospel must go out to them. The gospel must go out to them door to door where you do leafleting. Because nowadays door to door is very hard as well. You find on the doors of people they say, we do not answer doors from cold callers or salesmen. So you look at the the scriptures and the leaflets. Ah, so I'm a salesman. Well, what I do, I say I'm not a salesman. I just open the flap and I post it. Maybe that one you can do door to door, door to door, dropping leaflets. Now, if you want a proper interaction and conversation, go in the marketplace where people gather, begin to break the barriers, study. One day I remember I went to evangelize in one of the towns in Heath Hayes, and I sat down by uh, the corner of the park and I said, let me just observe what kind of age groups are in this area. I spent whole day observing and I'm counting. Age between this, I, mean, I can estimate I'm counting. I found that 80% of the people in that area were very young people. And they passed through that. That gave me an indication of, should I start giving out leaflets in this area? How should I pitch my gospel? I must pitch it to a place where it speaks to the young people. Because 80% of the people, the whole day I stood there counting, who passed by there were young people. Then the rest was the split between uh, the other age groups. So that is wisdom 
I'm trying to enter into a culture, understand it. I sit down, I do observation, then I go to prepare. I'm about to end this module. So the first the few things we have come out of this one, in conclusion, is number one, understanding culture, understanding how to break the barriers vis-a-vis -vis the United Kingdom, where do people gather? Mainly the pubs. Because there they go on a regular basis, you can even map out who comes on what day. We've talked about slightly on door to door. Now we'll talk about the other areas in the next lesson. So this lesson played back and forth and pick up some areas. And we've also looked at becoming to people all things. And that it does not mean sinning like we are sinning. No. It is in the areas which is not comfortable for you. The example I've used here is going to the pub. And you've never been to a pub yourself, or you've never been to a pub. The purpose is that you want to reach out to the lost souls. God counts on you. And we've also seen that God did not come physically on earth to do the evangelical work. He did that bit when he came in the form of his son, Yeshua. Now, in Matthew chapter 28, and verse 17 to 20, we see that he said, go, go, and make disciples of all nations. He sent us. God richly bless you. May the love of God be upon you and the love is so much all the time is this world. Be as sharp as you can. As you listen to this lesson, prepare yourself. This is an opportune time for you to come and reach to the lesson, to the lost souls. I invite you to the United Kingdom for those who are called to answer the call to be a missionary through these auspices of the Bible school. Thank you so much and God bless you. Atile kuri mose win para mapano pamu shiro pano fulen sapato mose ya fulen sapato no kuti no mulilo mose ya fulen sapato no kuti no mulilo mose ya fulen sapato no kuti no mulilo iyo ale kumbe na mamu banga chipu sa chibi shi chireli momulilo mbanga atile njemona. Ah, it's a good thing to say, it's a good thing to say.